Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh To carry on with the general anatomy lectures, I'm going to cover in this presentation the functional anatomy of the skin and fascia or the integumentary system. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt. The objectives of my presentation are First, I'm going to talk about the skin, its structure, skin appendages, lines of cleavage, and their functions. Then, I'm going to talk about the fascia, its types, characters of each type, and its functions. We have a layer called the epidermis. It is the top layer of the skin. Contains keratinocytes that form keratin, which act as a waterproof. It also has melanocytes, which produce melanin, that gives the skin its color. Also, it has cells that defend the body against microorganisms, we call it Langerhans cells. The other layer that forms the skin is called the dermis. It is the deeper layer that lies under the epidermis, contains blood vessels and sensory receptors. And of course, it's much more thicker than the epidermis. It also contains cells that give the skin its strength, support, and flexibility. So when we age, we lose these character because we lose the collagen and elasticity of the skin. And with the progress of age, wrinkles appear. Sometimes, in some congenital anomalies, the skin is over-flexible and over-stretchable as in this condition. For the skin appendages, we have the following. We have the nails. The root is buried inside the skin, while the body, you can see it uh, on the surface. We also have hair formed of a shaft, that is the exposed part of the hair on the surface of the skin, and a hair follicle, which is embedded within or inside the dermis. A muscle is attached to one side of the follicle, it's called erector belly muscle. When it contracts, it pulls the follicle towards it, leading to erection of the hair. This muscle is under involuntary control and controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. We also have what is called sebaceous glands or oil glands. They secrete sebum or oil and these glands open into the hair follicle and the sebum will lubricate the hair and make it shiny and prevents its pricking down and being brittle. Also we have sweat glands and they are of two types. Eccrine glands, they are more numerous, found all over the body. Their ducts open directly at the surface of the epidermis. Their secretion is clear, made of water and salt. We also have epocrine glands. They are fewer or less numerous, found at the armpits and the genital area. Their ducts open into the hair follicles at these regions. Their secretion contains fatty acids and proteins. For the lines of cleavage, the collagen and the elastic fibers in the dermis are arranged in parallel bundles. The lines of cleavage or lines of Langer lie parallel to the collagen fibers of the dermis. They have surgical importance and of a special pattern all over the body. A parallel cut to these Langer lines remains closed and heals well, while a cut across these lines, when it heals, it contracts, leaving a scar as we can see in this patient. The most important function of the skin is protection. So the skin acts as a barrier, either mechanical barrier or chemical barrier or biological barrier against germs. So intact skin, bacteria or germs cannot invade this. While we have cracks or ulcers in your skin, germs can invade the body. Also, the skin provide a protection against the harmful ultraviolet radiation of the sun. And we have two types of exposure to the sun. Acute exposure to the ultraviolet rays leading to 
sun burns. While chronic exposure to the ultraviolet rays of the sun may lead to skin cancer. And it is more common in fair skinned people than dark people. Also, the skin helps in regulation of the body temperature. So in hot weather, we sweat and there is widening of the blood vessels leading to heat radiation from the body. While in cold weather, the opposite occurs and there is narrowing of the blood vessels leading to heat storage. Next, we have another important function of the skin, which is absorption and excretion. So some substances like fat soluble substances can be absorbed through the skin into the blood vessels and the normal way of excretion through the skin is through the sweat glands. So the body can get rid of the excess water, salts and even urea. The other function of the skin which is very very important is synthesis of vitamin D. And also, the skin acts as a fifth sense. Since the skin contains many sensory receptors of various types, and sensations are transmitted from the skin to the central nervous system, such as sense of pressure, heat, cold, and pain. The fascia is a fibrous tissue network. It lies between the skin and the underlying muscles or bones. It's composed of two layers. The layer that lies just under the skin, we call it the superficial fascia, and the deeply situated layer is called the deep fascia. The superficial fascia lies beneath the skin and is firmly attached to it. It contains fat cells, blood vessels, nerves, lymphatics, and sometimes in certain areas we have muscles inside the subcutaneous fat as the platysma muscle which lies at the neck region. The superficial fascia insulates the body and acts as an energy reserve. It also gives the body its contour and shape, makes the skin slides over it, and gives a passage of the blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatics to the skin. While the deep fascia is a tough and made of dense fibrous connective tissue, it includes the layer of the fascia that lies beneath the skin and the superficial fascia. We call it the investing layer of the fascia. It wraps around the whole body. Also includes a thickening of the uh, fascia at the palm of the hand and the sole of the foot. We call it palmar and plantar aponeurosis. Also we have localized thicknings of the the fascia around the wrist and ankle, we call them the retinacula. Another form of the fascia is stretched between the bones and separates the different muscle groups, we call them the intermuscular septum. So if we look at this diagram and they remove the muscles, you can notice the intermuscular septum. Also, we have a layer of deep fascia that surrounds the individual organs. We call it the fibrous capsule. Here we can see the renal capsule or the fibrous capsule around the kidney. We may see a layer of deep fascia in the form of loose areolar tissue around the organs. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you can know if I upload another video.